In the early stages of the Cold War, jet aviation was making extraordinary progress. In only a decade, engineering teams across the world switched from making clumsy jet turbines slapped onto former props to complex, expensive, and very fast planes. Even the sound barrier became surmountable. Still, there were missions that could be completed by simpler, less refined machines. Besides, training the new generation of pilots demanded jets with simplified controls. At the same time, it became clear that some of the requirements for trainers and strike aircraft intersected. The idea to create a single combat trainer aircraft was in the air, so multiple nations tried their hands at making them, resulting in the Swedish Saab 105, the British Strike Master, the Franco-German Alpha Jet, and many others. The Czechoslovakian L-39 Albatross was one of the most popular combat trainers among the Warsaw Pact countries. Originally, it was developed by Aero Vodochody as a specialized jet trainer. It was designed to be able to take off at low speed even on unprepared airstrips and received a two-seat cockpit for training purposes. Extra emphasis was put on the simplicity and responsiveness of the plane's controls. The designers reused some of the solutions from their previous successful model, such as the tricycle landing gear, the tail control surfaces, and a cockpit that put the instructor behind and above the student. The L-39 began its trials in the late 1960s. Following the specifications, the aircraft proved to be very simple to control and became a perfect vehicle for beginner pilots. It quickly attracted the attention of numerous buyers, mostly from the Warsaw Pact countries. Several deals were struck, and hundreds of planes went to the Soviet Union, Romania, and East Germany, most of them being trainer versions. However, the machine was soon discovered to have strike potential. Libya was the first to order an armed albatross, the L-39ZO. The Czechoslovakian engineers equipped the aircraft with wing hardpoints that could carry up to 1,100 kilograms of weapons, and strengthened its wing and chassis. The vehicle successfully completed trials with unguided rockets. Bombs had a more pronounced effect on the plane's flight performance, but it still showed reliable results. Another combat version, the L-39ZA, was armed with the GSH-23 cannon installed in a separate pod under the fuselage. This modification required a slight change to the fuselage to fit the gun and its ammo. Despite multiple tweaks, the gun pod version remained problematic. At high angles of attack, the combustion gases could get into the engine and lead to its overheating. As a result, the engineers had to use special equipment to limit the gun's firing angles. Both the trainer and the combat versions of the L-39 joined the list of the most widespread aircraft in their respective classes. It continues to serve with air forces of three dozen nations, enjoys its time with several aerobatic groups, and perhaps even makes a handful of private owners very happy.